happy, healthy, beautiful day. Eric Higgins here, Reishi warrior. I call myself and our Reishi enthusiasts uh, around the world. Our goal is to impact the lives of 100,000 people in the next two years, sharing some epic concepts with you all. And I'm joined today by a global health expert, functional medicine, for one of the best in the game, in the world, Dr. Bob Rakowski, calling out of Houston, Texas. I'm calling out of Portugal. And we're here on this call today on Instagram and on Zoom, sharing how to combat and fight adrenal fatigue and burnout with functional medicine. So I uh, just want to welcome you, Dr. Bob, to the call. How is everything with you today? Hi, you know, it's an absolutely beautiful spring day in Houston, Texas. Uh, the world is happy and healthy and balanced and getting better by the moment. So absolutely beautiful. How are things in Portugal? They're great. They're great. It's getting warmer here by the day as well. So it's always great to see the sunshine coming in. Having the Irish blood, I'm used to that cool temperate oceanic climate, which basically means a lot of rain and a lot of damp. So it's nice to be here in this part of the world, just uh, enjoying it and, uh, you know, building our business, sharing some great ideas around living a better life, living better health online uh, with no restrictions. So pumped to be able to do that. And also super pumped to, to be uh, joining you on this call as well to share some value. And of course, for everyone watching live or in the replay, we really appreciate you coming on and we will make this interactive as well. So if you do have a question, please put it in the chat. We'll have a section for Q&A at the end of these calls as well. And if you're watching in the replay and you want either version or the Zoom version of this, either reach out to myself or Dr. Rakowski and we can send you the recording. But today we are talking about adrenal burnout. When it comes to functional medicine versus traditional medicine, Dr. Bob, could you explain to people who may not be so familiar with your work over the last three decades of being a global expert in that field, what is functional medicine and how is it applied or have you applied it in your clinical practice over the last three plus decades? That answer could be, uh, you know, could take our full day and, and even beyond. But really, when you start looking at a definition of what is functional medicine, you know, I like David Perlmutter. He was the only board certified neurologist slash nutritionist. Uh, and he was a huge fan of functional medicine. His father actually had a severe neurodegenerative condition. And he said, I don't want that to happen to me or my patients. So he started studying actual cause and effect. And ultimately, that's what we say is functional medicine. It actually looks at cause. Uh, and when you treat the cause and change the cause, you change the effect. And his definition of functional medicine was the opposite of dysfunctional medicine. Dysfunctional medicine, he said, instead of getting after cause and effect, essentially helped people to feel better while they were making bad choices. Then ultimately, these bad choices just cascaded and made them worse and worse and worse. So we want to figure out what's causing it, change it, resolve it, improve it. Uh, and now in my three plus decades of clinical practice, you know, I've applied it to every category of patient, whether we're talking about world champions looking to win another world championship or people sent home to die where medicine said we don't have answers. And, and very fortunately, some of these patients are alive decades later. And when it comes to adrenal fatigue, burnout, what are some of the causes or some of the symptoms that someone might be having a challenge in that area? cause, I, I'm, I'm actually going to jump to what the medical literature says. It says they believe that nearly everybody walking around has something that they call cortisol resistance. And, and so we need to define that term. Cortisol is the body's chronic stress hormone. Uh, and resistance means that the body's ignoring it. And what I tell people is that bodies ignore constant stimuli. So, you know, here I am in Houston, Texas, if I really pay attention, I can hear the hum of an air conditioner. Maybe somewhere else in the world, they could hear the hum of a heater. But some type of thing that's constant in our environment, we begin to ignore. Bodies ignore constant stimuli. You know, I, I look at everybody here and, you know, uh, I, I have glasses. Grace has glasses. It is not uncommon for me to do this with my glasses and then lose them. You know, it, it literally, I'll be looking around going, okay, where are my glasses? Well, bodies ignored my constant stimuli. So it could be my watch. It could be whatever, right? But at any rate, because people are releasing so much cortisol, they ignore it and they lose the anti-inflammatory benefit and good things that cortisol does for us. And the causes, we could go anything from the light we're exposed to, which is a lot of blue hues from screens, that is, is bad for distress in the system. Or we could look at the Magnificent Seven. In order to be healthy, you need to eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right. And if we had people give themselves an honest score on all of those Magnificent Seven, 
a lot of people are failing across the board on all seven. And what we're all about is helping them to make better choices and literally create the life and health that they deserve. How common is this of a problem? Do you see, Dr. Bob? I know you see a, a vast array of different kinds of people in your clinic, but at a guess, what would you say that the number of population would be that actually have this as a, as a daily issue? Oh, I don't know, 97%. 98%. When, when they use the term in the medical literature, many, if not all new world primates have elevated cortisol and cortisol resistance. They're probably talking about adults. You know, you start looking at these wonderful little children and, and hopefully little kids have this beautiful life and are nurtured by mom and dad and are expansive. Wouldn't that be, just be awesome if everybody had that? Hopefully that demographic doesn't have much distress, but you know, a, a lot of us have more than we should. And ultimately what we want to do is get control of our physiology, get control of our life, and, and even get control of our future, even though all we have is now, better choices now create a better tomorrow. We create enough better tomorrows and, and we have a beautiful future and a beautiful life. I like that. Better tomorrow for a beautiful future and a beautiful life. But when it comes to some of the athletes you have in your clinic, well, they're not just athletes, everyone that comes into your clinic, but especially athletes because they're under a higher degree of stress than a normal human and moving towards competition, what are some of the testing that you would do as a functional medicine doctor that you'd be able to assess these individuals and tune them up to get them to their absolute pinnacle point? Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that medicine in general doesn't have a good way of assessing stress, stress response. You know, they might do something called a tilt table test where they have someone lie down and then, you know, they don't even have them stand up. They tilt up the table to vertical. And if they get dizzy and their blood pressure drops, they consider that an extreme adrenal circumstance. But besides that, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to see how their eyes respond to light. You know, it's pretty fascinating that the eyes are very, very sensitive. If our pupils don't dilate, uh, sorry, constrict to light appropriately, that's one sign of, of uh, adrenal burnout. So people that constantly feel like they need sunglasses and any bright light, that's a problem. If they get dizzy on lying to standing, that's a problem. If there's any change in weight that's unexpected, either gain or loss, that could be a sign. If there's excessive fatigue, if there's worry, if there's challenges sleep, if there's gut distress, all of these things could be signs that the body's too distressed. But Eric, I'll say what I, I said before, bodies ignore constant stimuli. I think what happens is we've probably heard the metaphor of putting a frog in boiling water and it comes on so slowly it doesn't jump off. By the way, I hope people don't do that to frogs. That'd just be cruel. But the idea is that when changes are gradual, we often don't know what's going on until there's a pretty significant crisis. And I see plenty of people that have that. You know, they say, look, I was feeling pretty good. And then all of a sudden, boom, I've got an ulcer. Boom, I, I got really, really sick. Or, or worst case, you know, I have cancer, I have diabetes, something like that. Well, this stuff didn't come on overnight. It, it's been brewing in the background by not managing stress or really not effectively creating healthy choices across the board for a healthy life. Uh, when it comes to the nervous system, how does an imbalanced nervous system affect the rest of the body? Because I know we are a system of systems, or I love Paul checks as a complex system of systems, each affecting the other. What kind of upset would you, would you see typically if someone's nervous system is, is upset? Well, I, I'm glad you asked it that way. And what we know is that most of our nervous system is running the show in the background, it's called the autonomic or the automatic nervous system. And we've got the sympathetic, which is essentially fight or flight, uh, or the parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, recover. And if it's true that the vast majority of people have elevated cortisol, cortisol resistance, they're stuck in fight or flight, they're not resting, they're not recovering, they're not repairing, they're not digesting. Uh, and there was a very good book written over 20 years ago by a PhD out of Stanford named Robert Sapolsky entitled Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And here's the analogy that he used that was so powerful. I've probably taught with it thousands of times since I read it. He said, look, if you know a hurricane's coming or a tornado's coming, you're not going to paint your house today. Basically, buckle up, prepare for it. If the tornado or hurricane comes by and you still have a house tomorrow, We'll paint it then. So recovery and repair all go on hold when the body's in fight or flight. And here's what we know. Cells are always turning over. Our body is constantly remodeling. And if you're in fight or flight, it's not remodeling well. So all the systems are impaired. All the tissues are impaired. Uh, and your ability to thrive is impaired. 
Uh, and Sapolsky also said, you know what, in why zebras don't get ulcers, he says, you know, a zebra and a lion will be at the same watering hole. Uh, and they're enjoying their drink. And also the lion says, you know what, I, I think I'm hungry. That zebra looks pretty good. And he says, you know, it, within two minutes, either the zebra is over or the chase is over with. It's just that simple. And when it's over, they don't worry about it. It's like, okay, weathered that storm. Now I'm going to relax. I'm going to enjoy the day. I'm going to have another drink of water. And that's that. Whereas he said, we humans, we keep replaying the stressor over and over again. Not only do we replay, but we anticipate stressors and we feel the stress there. So wouldn't it nice to be in the now and the peaceful now? Uh, and, and that's one of the great solutions. You just mentioned something I, I listened to on a, a Joe Dispenza interview recently where he was talking about bringing up the thoughts or the anxiety of, of what could happen or what happened in the past. And it just creates that regurgitated chemical process of remembrance which is so destructive and it's you know it's so cyclical it, it keeps repeating itself and unless we change the thoughts as bob proctor used to always say you know change your paradigm and change your life really change the focus of your thought energy because it affects everything uh, it, it's pretty important really when we, we were on this discovery of, of self-development and going on our own journey we realize how important that is to really get that stuff down as well could you just speak about what impact personal development has had on your life as an individual as a man as a, someone who's an explorer in this life but also as a an expert educator and uh, i would say inspirator as well because you inspire a lot of people to go and live their best life dr bob you know thank you for saying that and, and here's what i'll tell you i i had great mentors early on we're all here to flourish we're all here to thrive and you know i remember like so many great mentors that i've had growing up and saying you know how far can i take this in life what can i achieve what can i accomplish who can i serve what can i create and then you come to realize that the way you do that is becoming better, stronger, faster, smarter <laughs> every single day by eating right, drinking right, thinking right, moving right, sleeping right, pooping right, talking right, by focusing on the mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, impactful aspects of life. So what has it done? It's done everything. Without personal development, I, I don't know where I'd be. You know, I, I, I might be someone who really just kind of got by like so many people do. Uh, and I'll, I'll go to John Maxwell on this one because, you know, he wrote a book and I think it was, it was entitled The 15 Laws of Growth. He loves these laws. Uh, and, and someone asked him, you know, 50 years ago, John, what's your plan for growth? And he said, plan for growth? Uh, do you have to plan for growth? And they said, well, if you don't, you're not likely to grow. And he plugged into that. And, you know, hearing that, it absolutely makes sense. If, if we, and ancient wisdom says we're teleological being, that's from Aristotle. We like goals. Why not pick a great goal? Why not pick your goal to serve hundreds of thousands in a relatively short period of time? And how do you do that? You show up consistently better, stronger, faster, smarter, adding value. And like you and me, and, and I believe, every, I think if you ask everybody who's on a good path and has created you know, something significant at this point, how much has personal growth been part of it? Nearly all of it. Nearly all of it. I love that. And for let's say everyone has up and down days everyone has a, has a day where they're not feeling so hot but you know we can develop that emotional intelligence and focus on the good and get on with it but is our energy slumps i should say is that normal that people would get energy slumps throughout the day or should we be having an even keel on our energy systems you know i like the way you ask that and yesterday you asked it different so i answered it different so should our energy always be ready to just go all out? Well, maybe not, right? We, so we, we have ebbs and flows just like a tide and we do have a cyclical nature, but here's the deal. If you're taking really good care of yourself, your energy should be smooth. And if you need more, you should be able to access it. Uh, and oddly enough, stress can do that. So we've probably heard the stories, everybody on here about the you know, 100 pound woman that picks a car up off of her child. How does that happen? Well, suddenly they are profoundly motivated and they were able to tap into every aspect of, of whatever kind of strength they would have to save a loved one. And so, you know, should we be smooth? Absolutely. Should we be able to uh, access phenomenal levels of energy? Absolutely. But is that true of most people? No. You know, Pete Cohen he loves to say that, you know, when the Mayo Clinic did a survey, they looked at four basic measures and 97.3% of people didn't even meet the basics uh, of where they were. So how are we as a society? Not very good. There's almost nowhere to go but up for, for the vast majority of people. 
we we aim to uh, to reach as many as we can but uh, i believe at this point in time a lot of people have fallen into the culture of convenience with whatever it is food drink you name it uh recreational drugs as well just to kind of get through the day you know covering up their pain or, or getting them through whatever they need to get through obviously the you know, drugs is one thing but when it comes to the reliance on you know energy drinks or coffee or, or other stimulants like that what what is the problem with relying on stimulants like that to get you through get you through the day so to speak you know i i really love how stephen covey said one of the things that's most helpful healthful empowering to people uh, is to operate within their sense of control so, you know, when you can control what's going on, you're, you feel a lot less stressed, a lot more empowered, a lot more capable. If you're relying on something outside of your body to create what you need inside, we have a problem. With the exception of maybe air, food, water, you know, those, those are the essentials. We all need those. And we, we could even say sleep. But when you need a stimulant, when you need something recreational, when you need something to take over your chemistry, what's going on is you're, you're not controlling it to the capability that you could potentially have. You know, there's a, a lecturer that I like called Sadhguru, and maybe he's not a lecturer, maybe he's a sage of wisdom. And he, you know, some of his videos have 10 million views on YouTube. And he says that the space between your ears is the most powerful pharmacy that the universe has ever seen. Uh, and you can create painkilling medication that's 30 times stronger than morphine. You can create a state of bliss that people would pay whatever to get to, you know, though that's the upside of things, but the opposite also occurs. And he's a big fan of just master your energy, master your emotions, master your chemistry, and you can create a beautiful moment and a beautiful life right here and right now. And, and think about, you know, one of my great patients, he didn't originate it, but I asked, he says, Bob, I, I think I figured out what life is all about. And I said, well, tell me, he's in his eighties. He said, life is right here, right now. And I thought about it and how profound that is. And what else is there? It's always now and we're always here. So why not make the best of it? And if we can start mastering our physiology, mastering our emotion, mastering our chemistry. And by the way, that's not necessarily easy. Da Vinci said there's no greater mastery than self-mastery. If we can do that, we're better off. So reaching outside of ourselves for, for any type of fix, quick fix, long-term fix, not a good idea. Learn to master it from within inside. Actually, what you said there reminded me of one of the best acting tips that I've ever received. And it was just two words, be present. You know, and I think a lot of times we, we, we miss it because we're, you know, flittering around. And I think the more times we recheck in with ourselves, like you just mentioned, take a breath, realign yourself, refocus on what you really need to be doing. I think people would be a whole lot better off. Uh, but when it comes to our incredible superstar of the show, we're talking about performance and uh, uh, all these different great things about being present. What I found has really helped me become more present is the number one superfood to our passion of sharing, which is reishi or also known as Ganoderma or Lingzi. How does that actually impact upon our nervous system? What are what's some of the data? And if you have something you can pull up on screen as well for you guys on Zoom, um, what are some of the data on reishi or Ganoderma for balancing the nervous system and calming the brain chemistry? Well, I'm not sure that I pulled up the, the PubMed that I would really be looking for with that, except for one where it actually shows that it is as calming as a prescription drug known as Valium. So let me, let me share that screen. When you start looking at people having challenges staying calm, that is one issue that they have. Anxiety may be the top mental challenge that people have. And, and so Valium, also known as diazepam, is, you know, it, it's an old school drug and it's still around because it was actually a pretty good one. It calmed people down, uh, wasn't as harsh as some of the new ones, but simple study, they found out that Ganoderma is as calming or Reishi is as calming as Valium, but without the downside. Now, if we look at the total nervous system, it's going to increase brain circulation. It can induce brain stem cells. It's phenomenal and proven to enhance the four major neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, and acetylcholine. Uh, and so you start looking, if you, if you calm stress in the body, you improve brain circulation. If you improve brain chemistry, you improve brain function. And it's known to do those things. And since you mentioned the entire nervous system, it's also known to drive the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxing part, the rest and recovery, rest, digest, recovery part. 
So it's one of the best things out there to create balance and nourish the body into a calm and healthy state. It's over, it's close to eight or eight years now, actually, uh, when I first heard this concept about reishi and also it being infused in coffee, which is what I thought was a contradiction. Calm plus coffee does not equal uh, common sense. So I was a little skeptical at first. I was wondering, how does that work? So I had a, a red flag going off in my mind. We talked about stimulants. We talked about that culture of you know, getting that instant hit of, of energy and then crashing and then coming back up during the day. But this was different for me. I, I wasn't even a coffee drinker, nor did I recommend it. But I, I found that once I started to consume it, I, I did, we're talking about movies and acting and, and stuff. And I am an actor, so sometimes I bring it into that sphere. But I literally felt like the, the movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper when he takes that NZT drug, it just calms and gets him super focused and lasered in on, on his tasks. I found that was hugely beneficial for me for concentration and focus and keeping myself calm. Could you just explain how that happens? I know you mentioned about some of the neurochemical shifts like GABA. Uh, could you explain how that affects concentration? I know it's probably dopamine that is really more focused there, right? Yeah, but if we look at a, a more complete picture rather than just a little segment of the picture, Certainly dopamine's amazing, GABA's amazing, acetylcholine's amazing, serotonin's amazing, driving the parasympathetic nervous system's amazing, alkalizing the system's amazing, putting the brakes on the inflammatory process is amazing. It does all these things. So which one makes the difference for you? Well, I bet it's gonna be slightly different than me and it's gonna be slightly different than people that we have watching. But that's the beauty of having this superfood, which doesn't rely on one molecule for action, like Valium is one, one molecule. We're talking about all the fabulous 50, all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, fat, fiber, and water, and doses that make a difference to human health, but also 430 identified unique molecules in reishi, in Ganoderma, not found in any other plant that creates so many health benefits that there are thousands, literally thousands of medical studies. Uh, so you start looking at how's it going to work for, for, for everybody. It gives the body something it needs. It helps to take away something that is distressing to the body, whether it's inflammation, acidity, infection, toxin. Uh, and it does that simultaneously. And, you know, most people feel a difference pretty quick. Uh, a lot of people you know, even feel miraculous after, after a cup, you know, people like Manny Pacquiao said, wow, <laughs> you know, how do I get more of this? And, and instantly said, this, this is for me and everybody I know. Yeah. Uh, I, something special as well. You were alluding to there as well is, is the adaptogenic properties and medicinal mushrooms. And I think why the, the, the health focused individuals of the world now are really looking, what, what is it about medicinal mushrooms? Like they've been around forever you know, from whether it's ginseng, it's, it's reishi, it's, it's cordyceps, it's ashwagandha, there's a whole list of these medicinal mushrooms, but on the top of the list, we have reishi itself. But what is it about the adaptogenic properties, Dr. Bob, that makes it so special? Well, uh, you know, you, I'm going to just answer first by saying that this is the king of herbs. And that is a distinction that doesn't come across lightly. You know, if I were to ask people, you know, who was the, the king of rock and roll, people could answer it was Elvis Presley. Will there ever be another or anything close? And the answer is no. How about the king of pop, Michael Jackson? Will there ever be another or anything close? The answer is no. How about the king of herbs, Reishi Ganoderma? Within it, it's everything. And when you have a whole smorgasbord of all the nutrients that are needed and all these other molecules and 5,000 plus years of human clinical use. The reason they call it a, an adaptogen is since we're all different, it does something slightly different for all of us, but it does it so consistently that they can study it and prove that it alkalizes, that it modulates the inflammatory process, that it kills off infection, that it drives the parasympathetic nervous system, that it improves brain circulation, that it improves the major neurotransmitters, and we go on and on and on. But it's really the effect of all of these great nutrients and all these wonderful molecules that you can't isolate. I tell people the very first book that I wrote a forward to is a book called Herbal Virtues. And here's the first line. There's a synergy in nature that can't be duplicated and can't be isolated. When we talk about synergy, one plus one is way more than one. Well, how about all the fabulous 50 and 430 more? What does that equal? The top 
superfood on the planet with profound and amazing safe health benefits for all who consume it, including animals. Yeah, we have our little uh, four-legged friend on spores as well. He's loving it. A little bit too energetic, I think, on some days for us to keep up with. Uh, but when it comes to functional medicine, I've heard this described before as functional medicine in a cup. As a practitioner, you, you do your best for the people that come into your clinical practice, but when they leave your practice, they're essentially on their own. Can you just share the importance of having something as powerful as, as health in the habit that they go home and they're actually still getting that therapeutic dose, even though you're not hands-on with that uh, patient? You know, I, I've taught for years and I, I would consider it a published fact that bodies respond to frequency, duration, intensity, quality, and timing of stimuli. The more things that you do that are good more consistently, the better the benefit you get. You're profoundly uh, proactive about your health and wellness, but I might ask you, you know, is there any supplement that you've taken consistently, you know, for coming up on a decade never missing, never needing to be reminded, never, never planning to quit. Uh, and I can tell you, I've talked to thousands of people that are in that category proactive and everybody misses, but does anybody ever miss their coffee? No way. Do they ever need to be reminded? Uh, -uh. Do they ever plan to quit? 99% don't plan to quit. And the other 1%, if they were informed about how good ours is, not only would they not plan to quit, they might even up their dose. So, you know, when we start looking at it, the ability, when we can share something with someone where literally every sip makes them healthier. And, you know, I've been partnered with Organo and, and this ratio infused coffee for a decade. And, you know, many, many, many millions of doses have been consumed and we've seen miracles, whether they're life-saving miracles or life-promoting miracles. You know, we just had someone that, you know, was trying to get pregnant for four years switch to our ratio infused coffee and just like that is pregnant. Well, how wonderful. So life enhancing, life promoting, life creating, life saving. Uh, and again, so consistent, so powerful, so amazing. Uh, I see Jim had a question around one of his friends with bowel cancer. Uh, Jim, if you want to unmute and ask the question, by all means, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, Bob, Dr. Bob, good evening. Uh, a good friend of mine, his food habits I don't want to sound judging here, but does tend to eat a lot of processed food and don't really touch much fruit or veg or any vitamins as such. And he's a, a great runner, a really good runner, but he's now got bowel cancer and he starts his treatment next week. They're looking at three types of treatment, surgery, radio and chemo. I can't remember which order the process was in. Now I have um a couple of boxes of red tea in stock and I was going to take him a box of red tea over. I was wondering about the spores, what sort of um, dose. Obviously, I would recommend that he speaks to his doctor. But as we know, um, it would be pretty helpful for him to take these uh, drinks and, and, the, and I think the spores as well. So that's really my question to you. All right, I'm, I'm putting a couple of videos in, in the chat. So one was a four hour lecture with 250 scientific le references at a nutrition and cancer conference with profound testimonials. The other uh, was, an, was a Zoom that I did with an integrative oncologist by the name of Jen Simmons. And after she saw me present on Ganoderma, she said, oh my God, my patients need to know about this. Now, I, I like the idea that you're responsibly saying, hey, he should clear it with his doctor. Well, if his doctor has the expertise to provide uh, guidance, then he should. If you were to present the top superfood proven against 15 different types of cancer, including colon cancer, something that enhances the killing effect of chemo and radiation while protecting the normal cells, uh, that's what Ganoderma does. And th there's not a single doctor with their head screwed on straight, they wouldn't say, wow, you need to have that. You need to have as much as possible. But I sent the two videos and I'm gonna encourage you to pass those on to this individual. I think he needs to have this information fast so that he can make a very good decision. Here's what I tell people. If you have a cancer that's isolated, if he has a colon cancer that hasn't metastasized, removing it should be curative. Uh, and hopefully that's the case. They cut around it, not into it. That's the way to get rid of it. But keep in mind, if it hasn't metastasized, then there's no need for radiation. What are you radiating but healthy tissue? There's no need for chemotherapy. What are you 
chemoing, but healthy tissue if they have it isolated and, and if they get it all. Uh, and that will be discussed in the videos that I sent, but bodies respond to frequency, duration, intensity, quality, and timing of stimuli. And I tell people, we don't really wanna go after a forest fire with a sport gun. You know, we wanna do everything possible. You already mentioned that he had a terrible diet, well, that's probably how he got to cancer. You know, it's actually estimated that about one third of all cancers are diet induced. You know, that needs to be resolved. Uh, but share the data. Uh, if, he, if he's interested, he'll dissect it, he'll absorb it. If he wants to schedule a consult with me, I'm happy to do it. We could even three way with this oncologist. And, you know, I've done that in the past. And, and when I start showing these PubMeds, the oncologists often wonder, why is it that I've never come across this? Well, now you have, and now you have a moral obligation to share. So I put that in the chat. Hopefully you can copy and use it and, and let's get your friend better. Um, so thank you so much for that question. Matt has a question around GABA. Could you please explain GABA and where it comes from and what it does? Sure. So by the way, if you want to look up GABA, it's capital G, capital A, capital B, capital A. Gamma amino butyric acid. It's a, basically an acronym. And so it's derived, originally the amino acid is glutamate, or glutamine, sorry, which is the most abundant amino acid of muscle and plasma. And glutamine is only one enzyme step away from glutamate, which is the most excitatory brain chemical. And we get into fight or flight with glutamate. And by the way, glutamate is only one enzyme step away from GABA. Uh, and th there's a, uh, an enzyme called glutamic acid decarboxylase that makes that conversion. And it requires B6 and taurine and lipoic acid for that to happen. But, you know, I, I go through that because one thing I want to tell people is it's very easy to make GABA, which means that it's very important, but it's made from glutamate, which is made from glutamine. And when I would teach the brain, I would often show a picture of a Ferrari. And I would tell people that our brain is like a Ferrari. Glutamate is the gas pedal. GABA, that's the brakes. If you don't have a gas pedal, you don't, have, you don't need brakes. But ultimately, probably the most important factor is the steering wheel, your perception. And how you perceive the circumstance is gonna determine whether or not you get in the fight or flight, whether or not you generate glutamate, whether or not you generate cortisol, whether or not you make GABA or other calming, peaceful chemicals. So it's a, it's a, a brain chemical. It's very abundant. It's one of the most common uh, brain chemical imbalances and not enough GABA is associated with anxiety, anger, issues like that. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that, Dr. Bob. And I like that visual reference as well. Uh, Grace has a testimony around the red tea, which she's currently uh, drinking. Grace, if you'd like to go ahead, please share. Yes, um, I was running low on red tea, so I ordered it but it didn't come in time. I ran out of the red tea and I was coughing, like really coughing badly. And um, then um, I heard the doorbell ring and I knew it was the red tea. So I ran, I ran to the doorbell and I got my red tea out of the box and I put the kettle on and I made a pot of red tea and I feel a lot better now. <laughs> Well, Grace, you wouldn't be the first one to experience that, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel a lot better. I'm not coughing. And um, yeah, it really helps a lot. Beautiful. Could you just mention, Dr. Bob, as well, what's so significant about the, the cordyceps infusion with reishi as well? So it's another top superfood. And, and if we go to, to the guru on medicinal mushrooms, his name is Paul Stamets. Uh, and years ago, he wrote a book called Medical Mycology, and he created a table of all the benefits of all the mushrooms. And the one that stood out as, as being the king, the best, the most powerful was reishi or Ganoderma. Uh, but number two was actually cordyceps. So how fascinating that the company Organo said, you know what, let's put both of these in. And that one tends to go really well in the red tea. That's good for, you mentioned not coughing. It's great for lungs. It's great for airways. Uh, and there's a gentleman from Kenya, Eliad Kipchoge, who ran a sub two hour marathon. It wasn't official because they had on a track with pace setters, but he did it uh, and he consumed our red tea throughout. So, you know, very powerful. You don't have to be uh, the, the greatest runner of all time to enjoy it, but 
the, the benefits are, are profoundly proven and, and cordyceps but in and of itself phenomenal in combination with Ganoderma, even better. Absolutely. I actually have a testimony with Eloisa. She would have uh, bad period pains. And I remember on numerous occasions, countless occasions where her energy and fatigue was down, her cramps was, were pretty horrendous from what I could gauge. And within a short period of time after, pardon the pun, uh, the, the red tea, uh, she was, you know, 80% better with, with inflammatory pain and, and overall fatigue and, and energy. So it's a great, great addition for your arsenal for whether you're training or just having uh, that extra consistent focus and energy throughout the day. Uh, the last question was there actually was from Louise. Uh, I'm okay to ask. Um, Louise is asking about heart health. Um, you know, we'll be doing calls around heart health. And I'm sure we can fit in something particularly around heart health as well, Dr. Bob, because it, uh, it is certainly a big uh, focal point, especially for Dave, as, as I know he's had a, a challenge there. In sure. Well, let me, let, me, let me say a few words about that now. So there's a functional medicine cardiologist while we're on the theme of functional medicine. And his name is Mark Houston, and he's a runner-up Rhodes Scholar. So he's a phenomenal brainiac. Uh, and, and what he'll tell you is that even though there are a thousand biomarkers for cardiovascular disease, there are three and only three causes, inflammation, oxidation, and autoimmune. Now, the great news, Ganoderma is good for all those things. Now, does that mean Ganoderma is the only thing you need for your heart? No, you need a good diet. You need to eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right. You know, magnesium is important. Coenzyme Q10 is important. Nitric oxide, which you get by controlling the inflammatory process, Ganoderm was good at picking that up as well. Taurine to stabilize the heart membrane, et cetera. Uh, what I might do is I have a, a patient, and this is a, a fun story, that came to see me at, at a seminar that I was teaching in Colorado because he was, he was brought in by someone said, look, you know, you need to meet my friend, Dr. Bob. And this guy was on a cardiac transplant. So I, when, I, when I met him, I said, well, how can I help you? And he said, well, you can't. And I said, okay, that's kind of a bold statement. Why are you saying that? He says, look, I'm on a heart transplant list. No one can help me. I'm, I'm lucky to be alive. And I said, well, okay, you know, uh, what's going on? And, and so he started to tell me, well, I showed him videos of people that were also on cardiac transplant lists and got off uh, and, and some pretty quick. And so the long story short is I, I created a Zoom with it. I'll, I'll put both of these in chat, but within 11 days, we got this guy from deep into cardiac transplant need to completely off the list and in some ways healthier than a normal healthy person. Uh, and we're talking 10 days and he had been on the transplant list for a couple of years. And so I put in the protocol for the comprehensive nutrition, and then I'll put in very specifically his video because his video is fun uh, or, or maybe not fun. You know, he opens it up by saying, okay, let me turn the clock back. You know, I was given a talk in front of a group of people. I had a heart attack and died. Uh, and thank God there were EMTs there and they had an electronic defibrillator and they saved me. And I died three times in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. And then they told me, you're screwed, you're gonna die. Well, he's doing awesome. So I put both of those in the chat and you'll see a comprehensive cardiac protocol that certainly is first do no harm uh, and may be really, really good. Wow. Well, I'm saving those here now as well to my, my email. I can draft those. So uh, thank you so much for everyone coming on to this call. You know what I say? Good information is only as good as its ap application. So uh, take some good action to help you get to where you want to go. So I'll pass it over to you, Dr. Bob, to close out the call. I know you have a busy day. So uh, thank you again for your consistency and your leadership. Well, I certainly appreciate you always coming up with these absolutely amazing questions and, and moderating and being wonderful and everybody that's on it. Uh, and I'm going to wrap up with four questions. They were taught to me by Jim Rohn, who famously launched Tony Robbins and a bunch of other really successful people. But Jim would wrap up with these questions. First question is why? Why'd you join us today? There's so many other things you could do. His second question is the answer to the first, why not? Why not learn about natural strategies to enhance stress management? And by the way, the one-stop shop for so many things just happens to be ratio or Ganoderma uh, and infused in coffee or tea is beyond brilliant. Uh, the next question is why not you? Someone's gonna say, this makes sense. I'm gonna make better choices. I'm gonna share this information with people that desperately need it. And together we can make the world better. 
And the final question is why not now? The longer you wait to act on information, the least likely you are to act on it. So take an action step, get some of this great stuff, put it in your body, share with friends. Let's make the world better. Uh, if you're in the evening part of the world, good night and God bless. If you're in the afternoon, God bless and enjoy the beautiful day. We'll see you next time.